long standing glaucoma trabeculectomy was done with a large pi about 35 years ago patient had a large agenes rulasti madsum the steep axis at 3 to 9 o'clock a 2.8 mm limbal corneal tunnel was made limbal floor entry with a cystitome where a cystitome which was bent to about 45 degrees was passed into the anterior chamber through the floor of the tunnel and the limbus the tunnel has remained closed throughout ac is filled with viscoelastic hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose because we have entered at the limbus not through the tunnel there is no overlock effect no folds in the cornea and there is no leak of visco from the eye the tunnel is enlarged with the blunt keratome superiorly i expect zonula dehiscence or zonula weakness so i avoided that single point head dissection was done from inferior quadrant nucleus epinuclear mass is rotated one edge is lifted up with a 26 gauge cannula rotated into the anterior chamber see that there is there is no traction on any part of the nucleus at any pa- any point of time rotation of nucleus epinucleus distributes the pressure all around the circumference of zonules so there is no single point pressure or pull or push on the zonules so this will minimize the further damage of zonule zonules if at all some some amount of zonular dehiscence is perm existing in glaucoma patients especially those who have had trabeculectomy are known to have big zonula big zonules and there could be a capsular dehiscence during surgery this technique will totally avoid nucleus in the anterior chamber is protected by viscoelastic infusion which separates the nucleus from the endothelium throughout it's bisected into two pieces and the nucleus epinucleus are removed see the way i drain the anterior chamber of the debris the cannula which is 23 gauge is continuously injecting viscoelastic into the eye the direction of the cannula is towards the center of the anterior chamber and the plane is parallel to the cornea so that way the tunnel opens up maximally draining the even larger particles from the anterior chamber the draining cannula is kept in the floor of the tunnel pressing it slightly so that there is a free flow of material in in an outward and downward direction from the anterior chamber to outside simco cannula is used simco is mounted in a silicon bulb so there is a very controlled flow of the bss into the eye and like when it is draining from a bottle there is no control on the fluid this continuously flowing here the amount of fluid that goes into the eye is uh, is absolutely controlled by visual feedback as to what's happening in the anterior chamber so i control the inflow i control the outflow the flow rates are very very minimal the vacuum is highly controlled by fingertips and that way there is a complete control of what is happening the fluidics and the hydrodynamics of the events that's happening in the eye because there is no side port i'm using right side and left sided simco cannula j shaped simco cannula to aspirate the cortex which is in the subincisional zone and the cortex which is aspirated can either be aspirated fully into the syringe or can be left in the middle of the anterior chamber so that as the fluid flows out the cortex gets drained out of the anterior chamber see that the entire procedure is an open chamber technique where the connection 
between the anterior chamber and the outside is kept open and uh, the there is no pressurization of the chamber at any point of time the entire surgery is a low pressure technique low flow technique low vacuum technique and uh, the anterior chamber is not deepened at any point of time except when you are doing the capsular excess i will is uh, pushed into the eye through a slit cartridge cartridge is slit on the top so that it opens up as the eyeball goes inside you don't need an injector a 16 gauge rod is good enough to push the lens into the capsular bag the lens is rotated and uh, it's important to aspirate the entire amount of uh, viscoelastic from the eye from the capsular bag from the back of the eye oil from the angle regions all around and from the back of the endothelium so this will minimize the post operative pressure hike and patient is going to be very comfortable with the eye without any pain or photophobia the eye is left open there is no need for bandaging because we not stretch the tunnel that was created there is no need to worry about post operative leaks of the aqueous humor outside the eye or post operative cross infection from mouth cage interval fluid eyes kept open and drops are started thank you